Hello, this is Tarantino Takes Over Sky Movies. I'm your host, Quentin Tarantino. And the movie I chose for tonight is Paul Thomas Anderson's There Will Be Blood. I think uh, There Will Be Blood uh, is definitely one of the best movies made in this last decade. And I couldn't be prouder of saying that. Um, Paul is uh, one of my best friends. And I would say he's probably um, the current filmmaking artist out right now, uh, who I consider the most a contemporary, uh, the most a friendly competitor. And I'm glad to be making movies in the same time as Paul. Many people consider uh, There Will Be Blood to be his masterpiece. I'm afraid I still have to choose Boogie Nights over There Will Be Blood. I, uh, as, as, as exquisite as There Will Be Blood is, I, I, still, would, I still prefer the um, exuberance of Boogie Nights over the formalism of There Will Be Blood. But the thing about There Will Be Blood um, that, you know, uh, aside from the obvious things like Daniel Day-Lewis's towering performance, one of the things that, that struck me after I saw the film which, by the way, if ever there's a movie that demands to be seen twice, if not more, but definitely it needs to be seen twice before you can really have an intelligent discussion about it, it would be There Will Be Blood. Um, I mean, it's so overpowering that really to truly try to talk about There Will Be Blood even uh, a, a few days after seeing it, you know, um, probably would amount to gibberish until you've seen it a second time. Um, but I did try to talk to Paul about it that very night after I had seen it. And um, one of the things I said to him is, you know, Paul is a very cinematic director. And like me, he he enjoys indulging in, in, in set pieces. And... Uh, the first time I saw it, I was like, wow, there's, there's no, um, there was really no cinematic set pieces in the movie, you know, uh, and Paul was, oh, well, thank you, Quentin. I, I, I take that as a, I take that as a compliment. I go, well, you may be the putting out of the fire, maybe, because, well, like if, if there is one, I guess maybe that would be it, as Paul replied. Well, then I saw the film again, and I was completely wrong that the, the putting out of the, you know, the, the oil. Well, then I saw the film again, and I was completely wrong. The, the putting out of the, you know, the, the oil fire is absolutely positively a set piece. It's a brilliant cinematic set piece. You know, from the time that the oil derrick explodes into the time uh, that the, the soundtrack kicks in, which is, by the way, I think one of the most modern, uh, was one of the great modern original soundtracks, uh, 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 you know, to be done. Of, of, of this last decade. But once that music kicks in and uh, you see Longview running with a, with a little boy, uh, then, you know, it's on. That is a cinematic set piece. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just different from the set pieces he indulged in, in both Boogie Nights and uh, Magnolia. Yeah, there's been so many things already said um, about Daniel Day-Lewis's performance that I won't just add any, any more you know, vomit of praise upon it because it's just, it's, there are facts. Water is wet, the sun is hot, and Daniel Day-Lewis in this film is great. Um, I will point out one little tiny thing, that, though, that's very interesting, is um, just a little nuance. The opening 20 minutes of the movie, which is, you know, more or less silent, is, is actually quite terrific. But one of the things to take in is when uh, Daniel Day-Lewis's character breaks his leg in the mine and finds the gold. Look at that surrounding, uh, the surrounding landscape around him, those rocks. It, it seems like he's out in the middle of nowhere. And... Uh, it's, it doesn't show his, his journey back to town. But that journey back to town literally would, would be a movie unto itself, you know, similar almost to the Richard Harris movie Man in the Wilderness. Because literally, 
He's got a broken leg. He would have have to actually, through those rocks, actually have to drug himself by his elbows miles and miles through the roughest terrain you can imagine until he finally got to the town and actually sought medical care while having to actually leave the gold that he found. That's not a contrivance. That's not a, a, a misstep. Daniel Day Lewis's performance so embodies the character that you can imagine he did just that. And also, as much of a bastard as this man proves himself to be, that courage that it would have taken to do that actually gives him the heroic right for almost everything that he does throughout the rest of the movie. He went through hell to get this fortune. He is not just a blood-sucking businessman, even though the film does work very wonderfully as uh, uh, not even a metaphor, as text for uh, the beginning of uh, capitalism in the industrial age. But the fact that the man actually would do such, be able to accomplish such an act almost gives him the right for everything that follows down the line. And the fact that Paul didn't need to show it. You have to make that movie into yourself. I think is actually quite profound. Not only that, if you actually even jump to the next scene, which would be the scene where he's laid out on the floor, his leg in a splint, him sitting on some sort of a, a, a stretcher, uh, and uh, they're counting the gold dust. Uh, on, on the scales. Look at Daniel Day-Lewis. Even having gone through all that and laying flat on the floor in a stretcher, he's still keeping an eye on him, you know? He's not that happy about these guys touching his gold. He's making sure that nobody's, uh, nobody gets uh, uh, swifty fingers here. And, he, and it, you know, it, it, it plays lovely. If I had um, uh, a criticism about the film, it would, uh, it would fall to uh, uh, Paul Dano's performance. Um, not that not the performance is bad. There's nothing bad about it. It's just it doesn't seem a compromise. It's just, it's he's just not in the level and the caliber of yes. Daniel Day Lewis. And if the two characters are meant to be combats uh, throughout the film, uh, then then Daniel Day Lewis is 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 Muhammad Ali and Paul Dano is. Jerry Quarry. Um, uh, and it's, you know, it's, uh, it is what it is. Um, I have to say that re, um, the relationship I enjoy with, um, with Paul is probably my most cherished relationship that I have with another filmmaker. We are, um, we are very friendly combatants. The way we look at it is um, it's we have a Marlon Brando Montgomery Cliff like relationship. I feel I'm Marlon Brando. Paul's Montgomery Cliff, and the reality is, Brando was better because Montgomery Cliff existed, and Montgomery Cliff was better because Brando existed, and no nothing makes me happier than for Paul to come out with a masterpiece like There Will Be Blood. And uh, nothing makes me happier. I couldn't be more pleased for him, proud of him, and nothing inspires me more to do better. So I can actually say, while there is no thematic link to my new movie, Inglorious Bastards, with There Will Be Blood, there is... Uh, there is I, if I reach high points with Inglorious Bastards, it is partly because Paul came out with There Will Be Blood a couple years ago, and I realized I had to bring up my game.